Oh my God, I haven't recorded in almost a year. This is crazy. What's up everybody, Alex here. I know it's been a very long time since you've seen a YouTube video of mine. That's because I took a very long and extended hiatus to kind of grab my thoughts and grab things back together because uh, doing this for the last seven years, it's been very difficult and I have just been completely burnt out. If anybody knows anything about traveling the world and anything about filming it, it's very difficult to do it alone and solo and let alone in the heat and especially driving a motorcycle. The complications of it and the logistics of it are just very, very time consuming and difficult. So doing that for many, many years was very difficult. So I invite you back to my channel. Thank you everybody who's been following and commenting and doing all these things. It's great to be back finally. It's taken quite a Quite an effort to be here, but here we are. To update you on things, I am currently in the United States. I am driving a motorcycle and I am outside South Dakota, Wyoming border area. And for the next few weeks, I will be driving this wonderful motorcycle across, visiting great sites. And I will be filming three very unique cinematic videos and I will be doing vlogs. And I kind of want to show you behind the scenes of what it takes to capture a cinematic journey and try to film it and have some help and do it solo, fly drones, a whole deal. I'm going to be more about the human experience of what it is to travel in 111 degree Fahrenheit heat like I did yesterday uh, to what it is to get to these monuments in the summer and what my personal journey is all about in the difficulty I've had this last year and trying to get back on the YouTube motivation inspiration and just um, that energy to want to keep doing this because uh, I love sharing my journey and inspiring others and informing everyone else but um after about seven, eight years, it really starts uh, being very, very difficult task. So anyway, for today's beautiful thing, we have the Devil's Tower, which is behind me. Uh, it's very busy right now. It's a very touristy season. And uh, yeah, it's just a very nice monument. It's a very weird geological formation that has really no uh, scientific evidence as to how it really formed. And it's always been uh, old wives tales. It's always been um, Native American stories about how it formed, but there's nothing that can prove how this thing was actually created geologically. We see theories and stuff like that, but there's nothing that's been 100% proven, which is quite interesting. So really unique site. People can actually climb all the very top. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for everybody for being patient with the videos and there's a lot more coming up, a lot more consistently, uh, hopefully weekly, bi-weekly. And uh, yeah, here we are. I'm gonna get on the road now and uh, head to Wyoming, which I heard is really awesome. So we'll see you there. Here we go. The adventure begins. My glove has a hole in it. That's so I can actually touch my screen on my cell phone and give myself the proper directions. And for those of you who are wondering who is this, delightful young lady in front of me. This is Grace. She is my wonderful and delightful friend. We met a few months ago at an event in California. She came to the event in South Dakota and we were both there and we said, hey, listen, we both want to do a trip. Uh, why not go together? Save cost and uh, logistics. She's going to help me film the cinematic video. So she's going to be here with me for the next week or two and uh, we're going to be filming some cool stuff and uh, with her help uh, hopefully we'll be able to document a really nice motorcycle journey so all right grace you ready and before anybody asks grace is not my girlfriend grace and i are not romantically engaged because i know that's what everybody's going to think when they see this video yes you can have female friends and yes there are badass female riders out there and she is one of them so this is her. And the thing about South Dakota and Wyoming area right now is there's a lot of Harley people because the world's largest motorcycle rally called uh, Sturgis Rally is around this area and it's coming up in about uh, two weeks. So lots of Harleys and cruiser type looking bikes. The park rangers over here, hello. They literally have like seven of these park rangers just dictating traffic. The tax dollars are going towards parking attendance. Very, very expensive parking attendance is what it seems like. So on another note, uh, if you notice, I got a nice quad lock phone adapter for my cell phone here. I got a GoPro on this side. I got a GoPro facing me and I got a GoPro in which uh, you're seeing this footage from. So hopefully I'll be able to capture things a little easier and not make it too difficult for me. inside the bottom. Yep. Look at that, we got an annual park pass now, which means I can visit any national park for uh, the same price. So both of y'all will get in, both of y'all need to sign in. Okay. You're all good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Off we go. All right, so for those of you who always have questions about my gear, I got a Super C5 helmet that is right here. Uh, it's really cool. It's made of fiberglass. It's super light and there's an integrated comm system from Senna and the battery pack is in the back here. So I no longer have to carry that huge Senna thing on the side, which is super, super nice. Currently wearing the Alpine Stars Boulder jacket. They were very nice to sponsor me again this year. So got nice gear and yeah, quad lock as well has my cell phone now, which has been very, very nice. And I'm currently waving to some bikers. Okay, hi. Uh, yeah, so that's my gear if you're curious because uh, 
uh, I get a lot of comments on what I'm wearing. But again, it doesn't matter what gear you're wearing. It doesn't matter whether you have a hole in your glove or not. Any motorcycle can be an adventure motorcycle. Any gear can be good gear. I drove from Alaska to Argentina on a terrible helmet and a terrible jacket and a pair of jeans, basically, and I did it. So you don't need all this fancy stuff. All you need is the ability to go out there, the vision, and uh, a little bit of motivation and inspiration, and you can make anything happen. So. and it's time for another gas up and as you all probably have figured out during this time gas is getting quite expensive luckily on motorcycles it's not too bad but with two motorcycles it's almost like filling up a car so four dollars eighty cents diesel's at five four point five so yeah it starts adding up I think every time we've been gassing up it's been uh, I don't know like twenty two dollars gassing up it's the half the price of a car for two bikes there we go Good stuff. Yeah, it is about 95 degrees. It's pretty toasty out here. These people doing it right. They can put down the top when they want to, but they can also have the air conditioning as they wish. That's always the hardest part about gassing. I was making sure that gas doesn't drip on there. One thing I've really been enjoying uh, from this trip so far is my equipment. SW Motec, super cool. They give me all my all the bags and stuff that I want and need. And uh, this thing actually has a magnetic lock. So Grace has straps, so you gotta take them on and off. It takes quite a while. With this one, you just basically put it here and it sticks on there and you're good to go. So very fast, very efficient and cool technology. Absolutely love it. Would have killed to have this when I was driving a last to Argentina. So I gotta say one thing about Wyoming that's been really interesting has been all the little towns like this uh, little old timey looking hotel, the saloon. Then you have a little fair going on over here, which is also very nice. Some people on a horse carriage, which is super cool. You got the little concert going on to the left over here. Wish we could go there, but we got places to be. And yeah, just this whole building architecture, these little small towns and cities drive through in Wyoming. Very, very cool. Very cute. Guys, we have made it to this little off-road gravel. It's very kind of cute, and you'll never guess the name of it. It is called Crazy Woman Road, and it just has a hilarious name. It's good stuff, good chuckle, lots of horses. Well, we ran into a problem here. Apparently the road is closed, which sucks, because it basically means we got to go all the way around which we were not planning for. It's garbage. All right, drove for another four hours and finally made it to some sort of uh, camping area, which is great. There's a little fire pit going on down there and it is uh, almost 9 p.m. and there's still a lot of light. And this is a really cool camp spot because it's free and there's a little stream behind there. I don't know if you can hear it. But it's super cool, super homey. Gonna put the tents up here uh, next to the trees. Pretty great area. And yeah, what a pretty adventurous day, pretty awesome. And just enjoying being out here in nature because this is what it's all about, right? You get these little beautiful spots and you know, the struggles are just kind of melted away after the whole day. So just hearing the stream and just being in nature and having a moment like this is just um, it's what really makes it worth it to me. So. Love it. I can smell the air. I can feel the adventure. It's awesome. So good. All right, time to build a tent. Oh man, it got super, super cold. It got down to uh, like 57 degrees Fahrenheit, which after, you know, 100 plus days, it's, uh, it's quite cold. We were not prepared for that, but luckily we zipped up everything and we made it just fine. So if you're asking why we're putting our tents next to each other, well, that's because number one, safety out in the wilderness. Uh, there's always animals and stuff. Number two, the human animal, also very dangerous. So we don't want anybody sneaking up on us or whatever it is. So this is uh, for safety, number one. Also, in case it gets really windy, it'll help dissipate the, uh, the wind and so forth. So yeah, whenever you're camping, the main idea is to always stay safe. And um, one of the ways you can do that is by doing that. All right, so for those of you wondering what I am doing now, I am pumping up my air mattress in my tent and I'm putting my sleeping bag and my pillow. 
And to do this, uh, I used to do it manually, just blowing all the time, but that gets very tiring very quick. And I've almost passed out a few times by blowing so much air. So now I have a really cheap, small air pump. It's definitely worth it. A little loud and takes away from the sounds of nature, but definitely worth it. Then on this little thing you have here, you actually are able to blow air manually and the air doesn't come out. So you close the main valve and then you open a smaller valve and then you blow in it to get that extra air that you lose when you're trying to actually close it from the pump. Sounds pretty good. All right, pillow's done. Usually people like them pretty firm. I like the pillows pretty soft. And all these are inflated by air, which is super great, super convenient. And uh, yeah, packs up very nice in this little bag, this little air pump, and it's amazing. Grace does not have an air pump, and she saw my air pump, and she's like, oh my god, I should get an air pump. Finally, this is a sleeping bag. And this sleeping bag has a lot of history because it has traveled with me since the beginning of my travels, starting 17 years ago, when I was 17 years old myself. And this one was my dad's that he took to Alaska one time. I purchased it off of him for like $50 or $40, and it has been to like over 50 countries around the world and it still works fine, and it's absolutely amazing the fact that it's lasted 17 years, this sleeping bag. Pretty much my trophy and memento of some of my travels is my backpack's been with me everywhere, sleeping bag's with, been with me everywhere. I think that's pretty much it that's been with me everywhere. Everything else changes. Pretty crazy to think, huh? 17 years with the same sleeping bag. That's life. One thing that's pretty extreme that most people don't understand is um, whenever I travel and I camp in random places, I always bring my most important stuff with me in the tent. I don't like leaving it on the bike. Even though there's a uh, you know, small chance of anything happening, um, I don't want to take that chance. So when I was camping out in South America, there's people that walk around everywhere. So you never know if somebody's going to do something. And then sometimes I sleep with earplugs as well. It's hard to wake up to sounds when you're wearing earplugs. So I always like to keep the most important stuff like my camera gear, my laptop with me inside the tent most of the time. That's when I travel. Today, uh, pretty safe, so I'm only taking my uh, usual stuff in case it does rain or anything happens. Uh, always bring it in the tent for safety first. And I think the hardest thing about this trip and everything is getting back into vlogging. I haven't vlogged, really, in almost a year. So even just getting the camera settings right, even trying to figure out what I wanted to tell, the story behind it, I really couldn't figure it out. It's taken me weeks and months to just be like, okay, this is what I want to do. And even just talking to the camera and even talking to you guys, it's been very difficult just because I got so burned out doing it. And what this trip has taught me the last week of filming this, even though this is just day one, I've been trying for seven days to film, but I haven't. Filming the way I did every single day, when I did South America, when I did all the other countries, it was a nightmare. It was basically, I could only film. The only thing I ever had to do was time to film. I had no time to enjoy. I had no time to see. And I don't want that to happen again. And I got super burnt out uh, doing this. And it was just, it was just very, very bad. Awful, to say the least. I'm trying to find ways that isn't going to kill me to do this, because uh, I love sharing and inspiring and giving some sort of uh, hope for people or uh, details and ways to do things. I just love doing it. I love being out here. I love having these moments. But it's just incredibly difficult to document, edit, and do all that stuff. It's just too time consuming. You lose. You lose everything that is um, the journey in the moment. So I'm trying to get a better balance on not too much, but not too little. And most people that are watching this just will never experience to know how difficult it is to travel on the motorcycle and document it as best as you can. Quite a lot of people don't do it. It's incredibly difficult. The fact that I was able to do it for so many years, five years, I think, nonstop, um, baffles me. Because now I find it so difficult just to do one day. I can't even imagine to do it again for five years. This trip, I'm going to try to do cinematic videos, some creative stuff, uh, evolve my cinematography, and just document as the cool things that I think are cool and share with you guys inspirational moments. Wait, all right, I'm going to go make dinner and go to bed. All right, Grace, tell the nice people what exactly we are having for dinner. Salad in a bag. Um... My rotisserie chicken and how magnificent this is. Oh, look at that rotisserie look chicken. Look at this. It's so awesome. That's $9.99 you can buy. Hell yeah. <laughs> totally worth it. So there you have it. We got chicken, salad, and macaroni and cheese. I think some chips as well. So that is our dinner. And that is the end of the day today. And the sun is officially going down at 10 p.m. pretty much. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this adventure today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.